Hey folks, welcome today, and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the native trees of Georgia. Very similar to the way that one of my friends, Mr. Bill Lott and Mr. Chick Diller did back in the mid-90s when they made two VHS tapes for high school students talking about the native trees of Georgia and their importance. With the use of new technology, what I'm going to try to do is segment, instead of having two long videos, is each tree to kind of be featured in a video clip on its own so if i was in the classroom today i could actually look at each individual tree as a lesson and kind of break things down to its parts and kind of talk about some things as far as key characteristics and things that are deemed important by each individual one as for the forest industry so let's go ahead and kind of get started in this introduction and break them down into two of the major categories. Two of the major categories of these trees are going to be broadleaf and conifers. So let's go ahead and divide them. Broadleaf are going to be considered open, wide leaves that are more or less uh, most of our trees that we find in are considered deciduous. But not all broadleaf trees are deciduous. The key characteristics that they have, they share with one another is wide open leaves, and most of them have margins, mid ribs, and attach at a petiole. They also produce big fruits, not this large. If you look, this water oak did not make acre in this size. I stole this one off my wife's shelf to kind of give you an example and you could actually see. But they do produce fruit that most of the time animals see as attractive and actually helps with seed dispersal. Kind of like for example, acorns are mostly gonna be distributed by small rodents like squirrels. They'll take them, they'll bury them, and forget about where they buried them. And that's where a lot of our oak trees get, get planted at, is actually by squirrels. They can live and stay in the leaf litter until they stratify or scarify. And they don't, they don't mind living in leaf litter for several years. And they're mostly shade tolerant, so they'll actually come up within a closed canopy. That's gonna be our example. Of, it's gonna be a water oak of our broadleaf trees. Moving over to our other example of conifers. This is, I uh, went and pulled a slash pine. Conifers are gonna have scale-like or needle-like leaves. So they're, they're needle-like, that would be the petiole. If you look at these two uh, leaves, they're very different. One week in the refrigerator, you can see how these are still pliable and supple. These have already started to become very brittle. So conifers are more adapted to cold climate for winter months and also they're also more adapted to uh, drier climates as well where they, they won't desiccate out and they won't dry out as much and they're more drought tolerant than your broadleaves. Furthermore, a lot of these are known as evergreens. Evergreen simply means that it stays green year round but we can't call them all evergreens because there are some conifers that actually do lose their needles during the fall of the year. Um, for a conifer, uh, more or less, it's going to produce seeds that are going to be in cones. Now, if you look at both of these slash pine, you may say this is an old cone that all of its seeds have dispersed, and this is a new cone that hasn't even opened yet. But that's untrue. This one was open this morning, and this one was actually closed this morning. And I've actually experimented and opened and closed both of these cones several times. And I'm gonna to attempt to make a time-lapse video of showing how to open and close the cones uh, by, by use, using a time-lapse camera. But the way it happens is very similar to a way your thermostat actually moves in your house because of the heat. Thermostat has two different types of metals on either side that expand and contract because of the temperature. 
each scale inside of a pine cone is made out of a different density of wood. One side has very dense wood, takes a long time for it to dry out, or takes a long time for it to absorb moisture. And the other side takes a long time for it uh, to, the, and the opposite side is very, very, uh, is not as dense and it absorbs water more readily and it also dries out more readily and it will open and close with the amount of moisture this is very important in seed dispersal pine trees are are very 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 uh, dependent on fire most of the time to help with seed dispersal and or opening of the cones usually when a fire goes through an area what it does is it totally cleans the undergrowth and underbrush. Pine seeds need a bare mineral soil for good germination. Furthermore, all the heat generated from the fire will actually open all the scales and allow the Samaras and the little bitty seeds to helicopter out. A lot of times, whatever height that the cone is, is in the tree, the Samaras and it will helicopter out two times the height of the tree is when it actually, uh, the distance that it will actually go. But th those are some of the things that I'm really gonna kind of attempt to do. And we'll talk about uh, some of these other trees as we, as we go through the different steps. But again, the two categories in review that we have are gonna be conifers, produce seeds and cones, scale-like or needle-like leaves and your broad leaf are going to have more of a supple fruit um, that are usually going to be more or less dispersed by animals uh, or planted by animals. An acorn would probably fall underneath the tree and wait until conditions were right to germinate. Other broadleaf trees, maybe like persimmon or uh, black cherry, would need animals to distribute them that's uh, by eating the supple fruit and later on uh, after it passes through the digestive tract depositing those seeds in other places will be our broadleaf trees thank you and i look forward to talking to each one of you in the following videos